Listen to the music of the carousel, the ting-a-ling-a-ling and of the ice cream bell. Alamin, lift your corner, your partner, do si do. The men's car left is once around you go. Do si do, your partner, your corner, Alamin. Come back and promenade around that old land. Here comes summer sounds, the summer sounds I love. Heads star through, pass through, circle around the track. Edge and break, you make a line, go forward, up and back. You pass through, you wheel and deal, the center star through. Now pass through, clover leaf, the new center two. Square through, three quarters round, and turn the corner by the left. All the way round and promenade the here comes summer sounds, the summer sounds I love here. This is a story about modern western square dancing. The setting, the world's greatest square dancing event, the 19th National Square Dance Convention in Louisville, Kentucky. Square dancing was brought to America in colonial times, moved west, and within the last two decades, has evolved into modern Western square dancing. This is not to be confused with old-fashioned barn dancing or with the clogging type of mountain square dancing that is seen on TV. In the U.S. alone, there are now more than three million people who enjoy square dancing. What kinds of people are they? Are they, well, square? Anything but. Today's square dancers are businessmen, industrial workers, professional men, retired persons, young people, people of all ages and from all walks of life. Virtually every occupation is represented. But to the square dancers, occupation is unimportant. Wherever you go, you find square dancers to be the friendliest, warmest people in town, eager to welcome you into their group. Square dancing, you'll discover, is a refreshing, stimulating way to get a little exercise or of brushing the cobwebs of a busy day from your mind. This film is presented by the Kentuckiana Square Dance Association and its more than 3,000 dancers in the Louisville area. Where do all these people dance? Some of the oldest square dance clubs had their origin in churches and are still going. In fact, more than one-third of the 71 Kentuckiana clubs dance in church facilities, both Protestant and Catholic. It's an ideal recreation for youth groups or older groups because it's a good, clean stimulant for both mind and body, and it's inexpensive. Three clubs are associated with industrial plants, while 10 clubs dance in area recreation halls. Another 19 clubs dance in the facilities of the Jefferson County Public Schools, and six groups dance in country clubs. Modern Western square dancing is the world's greatest social mixer. It's a great way to meet new people, and it's challenging, too. You're always learning something new. Half the fun in square dancing is the enjoyment of dancing in a square of people that you don't even know. You'll not be a stranger after the first set, for you're among the finest people on earth, out for an enjoyable evening with friends. No drinking is permitted, for an alcoholic breath in a tight square is very offensive. And since everyone in the square is depending on everyone else to execute the calls, someone who has had a drink or two is likely to mess up the square. For those who are looking for a new family recreation, learning to square dance can provide an enjoyable excursion into something new and different. After you've danced a few years, you look back and recall with pleasure the time you spent so well, and all for about $2 an evening. Let's join the fun people at the world's greatest square dancing event. This was the largest registered convention ever held in Louisville. 19,542 dancers from every state in the Union and eight foreign countries, everyone paying his own way. Don't they look like they're having fun? For those of you who could not attend, the 19th National Square Dance Convention being held here in Louisville, Kentucky at the Coliseum, we thought we'd just bring you some here on Sunday morning town and country time. 
Of course, you've got to bear in mind that this is while the convention is going on. It ended last night. With me, I have one of the gentlemen quite active in the convention I would like for you to meet. And this is Vaughn Parrish of Boulder, Colorado. He's a rancher, and he's a very well-known, nationally known square dance caller. And Vaughn, you've got a big crowd here today for the convention. I think it's going to be a record. Well, that's what I understand, that uh, previously there was around 1961, about 18,000 in Detroit. Yeah. But it looks like we're going to hit 19 or 20,000 here. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't. I want to find out something. I was used to, as a youngster, dancing the ocean wave and the cowboy loop. But now this is called modern western square dancing. What modern is it western. different? What is the story upon it? Well, I think uh, back years ago, the people got together and they did the folk dances, the dances that they brought over from the old countries, and some of them got a little rambunctious, and uh, we think of it as that type of square dancing died out. It was in the backwoods and the barns, and some of them wound up in the brawl, and that type of thing died out, and we give credit to the late Happy Shaw, Dr. Lloyd Shaw from Colorado Springs, as being the person who uh, dug back into the, the old cowboy dances, as he called them, and... Uh, revived this, cleaned it up, so to speak, taking it out of the backwoods and barns and put it about out on Main Street where the average American can just have a lot of fun square dancing. It's been cleaned see, up and put on Main Street. You say the average American, but can the average American uh, do these figures? Is it very hard to learn? Is it very uh, uh, rigorous, uh, tiring or anything? Well, we know people who've been retired for years, and that's all they do for, is square dance. Is that uh, right? Older people. and. Uh, Actually, the hardest thing about it is walking in time to the music, and we take little steps and drag our feet a little bit, and we get the shuffling sound. Walk and in time to the music, drag your feet, and shuffle. Yeah, just you get you get a little shuffling sound if you drag your feet, and if you notice the people, they're all moving along in time to the music. If you do anything harder than that, it's it's up to you. What is a square, Vaughn? Uh, four couples, eight people, and they comprise the basic step that the caller is calling. Yeah, uh, what happens, you take a couple, if they're interested in getting into square dancing, in a modern western square dancing, just get a hold of some of your neighbors. Uh, you you probably got one on one side or the other across the steep street, and ask them how they can learn this, and they'll get you to some caller that they know, and you will get into a class, and he will teach. Uh, it might run 20, 30, 50 weeks, one night a week for about three hours, and he teaches you what each command, how you execute a movement of a command. And when you put all these together and the caller puts these commands together, you just move through these commands uh, in time to the music. What is this that's going on now? If you're hearing in the back, well, <laughs> he just quit. He just he? quit on us. <laughs> well, he just finished a patter call, what we call a patter call, where he does, oh, I'd say 75% of the callers memorize the figures that they put together and call like that, but some of us call spontaneous choreography. We put, uh, a, for instance, a square through together. When we give the command square through, the dancers know exactly how they execute a square through. By the time they have finished a square through, you should have given them the second command. Maybe it would be a right and a left through. And they should have that in time so they can glide right into a right and a left through without having to stop or hurry to catch up. That would be good timing. And they keep just dance along to the music. And next to the patter, you say, is a singing call. Is this the actual this sings is, the patter? Yes, they, somebody has put a figure together to fit the song, and then you sing it. Of course, now you notice right now, he's kind of singing now, but he's uh, he's kind of pattering that singing call, but now he's starting to sing. How many uh, callers are there nationally? Oh, oh, do you have God. any idea? I have no idea. How what about square dancers? How many clubs or how many square dancers? I have no idea how many square dance clubs there are, but there's millions of square dancers, and there are square dance clubs in just about any town you want to go to in uh, North America, and that includes Canada. I understand in talking with the uh, some of the people here that the convention this year is composed of representatives from 50 states uh, all over Canada and several foreign countries, including uh, Saudi Arabia. That's Puerto that's right. Rico and uh, all. Uh, oh, do yeah. people just uh, make a hobby of visiting uh, all over the country? Well, they kind of plan their vacation so they can go to this thing, because it's held every year. Before we get into more of the square dancing, I understand you have an agricultural background. Well, I've, originally I was a farmer in Texas, but my wife and I moved to Colorado about 20 years ago, and we've been 
we hadn't been square dancing long when we moved to Colorado. And, uh, 19 years ago, I began square dance calling, and we did this uh, a few nights a week. And uh, pretty soon I found myself uh, going six nights a week and couldn't keep up in the daytime, and I kept going farther and farther from home as people were nice enough to ask me to come and call for their club. Why? We just had to kind of leave home a little bit, but I still got a still got a ranch. And a little sister and her husband live on the ranch, and my one of my brothers live there, and they keep the ranch going. I hope they're getting the hay put up right now. How big a ranch do you have, Vaughn? We have 2,100 acres. 2,100 acres, and I have three. So you can see there's quite a comparison. Well, we sometimes uh, a fella told us said you really get the full benefit out of it. Some of it. We're right at the east edge of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, and some of them, they say you turn it up on edge and count both sides. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can certainly say there's a wonderful crowd here as they anticipate a total registration, pre-registration, 15 to 16,000. Thousands of trailers, I understand, are here. Every hotel room jammed and crammed, the largest convention to ever visit, uh, I believe, Louisville. Uh, we're sure glad to get be back here. We were here in 58 when they had the national here in 58. 1958 well, and you're here this year, and we hope that you'll be coming back sometime soon. Thank you. Well, again, I would like to yes. get one, uh, one uh, word across to the yeah. average person who watches square dancing. Uh, this is what we call modern western square dancing. It is easy, and anyone can do it, and uh, we'd like for everybody to give it a try. Well, I think after the exposure that you've given, the story that you've told, and what they've seen, I know a lot of people who'll be witnessing this on Sunday morning will wish they had been out here like we were on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Again, thank you, Vaughn. Well, thank you very and much. And much success to you, and we hope thank that you. we'll be seeing you back here in the very near future if Louisville gets the convention again. Thank you a lot. Thank you. There you have it, a visit with Vaughn Parrish and a look at the modern Western square dancing as was witnessed here for the 19th annual convention, the National Convention of Square Dancers of Memorial Coliseum. Joe Hamilton for Town and Country Time. There are many things to do at a square dance convention other than dance. There's always a fashion show where the moderator and models who are square dancers show the latest fashions. Sometimes it's civilian or street clothes with a Western flavor. However, the most colorful part of the show is the latest in square dancing ensembles, with the ladies in their eye-catching bouffant skirts. A fashion show always gives the ladies an opportunity to use their imaginations to come up with new combinations of materials and trim. Convention spectators and dancers alike enjoy the performances of exhibition groups from all over our great nation. These young people are the shooting stars from Omaha, Nebraska. They are a teenage square dance club specializing in precision routines written by members of their own group. This group is the Kansas City Flying Saucers. Representing Greater Kansas City, they've been doing exhibitions since 1958. They helped organize and served as officers in the Heart of America Youth Federation of Square Dance Clubs. Their leaders write their routines. The Miami Twirlers from Anderson, Indiana are a fine group of teenagers whose specialty is Western style square dancing, done in single, tandem, and hexagon squares. They have performed at many square dance functions throughout the state of Indiana, but this is their first national convention. These are the Maycroft Square Tappers from Muskegon, Michigan, under the leadership of Gene and Alice Maycroft. They are the convention's youngest square dance group, with ages ranging from 4 to 14. This is the fourth national square dance convention at which they have performed their specialty, the clogging type of square dancing. Don't you wish you had this kind of energy? Here is a group that is a real inspiration to all of us. 
They are the Silver Spinners from Seattle, Washington. This wheelchair group was formed in 1968 by their teacher and caller, Lee Downey. They are connected with the Seattle Handicap Center and have performed at many square dance functions and other activities throughout the Washington area. They all had a lot of fun at our national convention. Sunday drive is an old custom, but if you tried that at about 1.30 Sunday morning along 4th Street, you'd find a group that was do -si doing their way till dawn, and the only thing you could do was promenade. Hi, <laughs> see, you're from Texas. Yeah, Tyler, Texas. Now, how many conventions have you been to? Four. Yeah. Consecutively, or? No, we missed uh, Seattle uh, last year. Now, what's the attraction of square dancing for you that'll take you all around the country like this? Just meeting friends and people and having a good time. And have you had a good time this week? We've had a ball. Louisville's been wonderful to us. Do you find that the uh, callers are different uh, from different parts of the country? Uh, you pretty well get used to them all over the country. They all speak the same language. Same thing. that uh, your shirt matches her dress. Is this part of the uh, part of the rules? Well, my wife made uh, made the outfit. Just to be uh, alike, like partners, so you know you're a partner. Did you ever think you'd be dancing on 4th Street at 1.30 in the morning? Well, we did it in Indianapolis and in Omaha. <laughs> you got a sound problem in most places. You can't understand them, but once the sound is, and about a year's experience, why, they don't play them give you very much trouble. Do these usually go to 2 a.m. or not? No, <laughs> normally about 8 to 10.30 is normal. Perhaps one of the most refreshing aspects about this story is that despite the war and the peaks and valleys of the economy and the other problems of life in 1970, Hundreds of people can still find reason to dance in the streets. And if nothing else, these square dancers are proving that when it comes to having a good time, they are anything but square. This is Chuck Coffey, WHAS News on 4th Street. Following is a Wave editorial. Speaking for WAVE management, here is Rodney Ford. Nearly 20,000 visitors were in our community last week for the National Square Dance Convention. It was the biggest convention ever held here. Yet, not one extra policeman had to be put on duty. And as far as we know, there was not a single incident to disrupt the affair. How refreshing it is in this era of trouble and confrontations that so many people can come together in an atmosphere of consideration and understanding. Here was an occasion that drew people from every state and at least eight foreign countries, getting together for fun and fellowship. Whether you're from Saudi Arabia, Newfoundland, the U.S., or somewhere else, there's a universal language among square dancers. An element left is an element left anywhere in the world. We're glad the square dancers came to Louisville. We hope they come back again soon. Why not learn to square dance? Join the fun people. It's America's fastest growing family recreation. Partner by the right hand round, left alamander, and promenade. Your time hasn't come yet, baby. When it does, your little heart will know. Swinger boy, when it does, your little heart will know. All right. 